So um, <clears throat> I was at a presentation recently and I had the same experience that I often have when I ask people about the blood pressure medicine they're on. Um, <clears throat> quite often people will tell me they're on Losartan or one of the ARBs. Uh, that, that stands for angiotensin receptor blocker. Um, again, these are fairly informed patients for the most part. And I asked them if they tried uh, Ramipril, Lisinopril, one of the ACE inhibitors. Um, I, uh, with a lot of those folks, they just give me the deer in the headlights look. And that's because they were, the ACE inhibitors were never discussed with them by their doc. Um, and others say, well, you know what, I didn't want to try them because I don't like, I get the cough when I, I take ACE inhibitors. Um, <clears throat> they think I'm a nut when I, and maybe I am, uh, but I will still continue to push this issue. Um, sometimes I have my own coughing spells, uh, even when I'm giving a presentation. It's usually only if there's, it's during allergy season. But they say, you know, see, you got this cough too. Why, why do you continue to take ACE inhibitors? Just take uh, Losartan. I used to take Losartan. I started on that. And then I read up on them. And there's a very strong reason why you should be on ACE inhibitors, not ARBs. Uh, well, we'll get into that in just a minute. First, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R, -E -E with PrevMed. Uh, we, uh, we help focus on prevention so you uh, you don't have to have that heart attack, that stroke, that uh, uh, dementia, heart failure. Um, prevention is, takes discipline and it seems like the hard route but uh, as many of us know, you, we all know, sometimes the easy route is not the, the easy, the easy route in the, in the beginning is not the easiest in the long term. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go through the basics of a, one of the review articles on ACEs versus ARBs, and I'll give you the, uh, the information uh, below. This is differences in the clinical effects of angiotensin converting enzymes, uh, inhibitors, and uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, ACE, so ACE inhibitors, and ARB, uh, angiotensin receptor blockers. A critical review of the evidence. Um, now, <clears throat> why don't we start by talking about what is angiotensin? What's uh, angiotensin receptor blockers? What do these things do? Angiotensin, bradykinin, there, well, angiotensin is a, is a um, type of hormone, um, a prostaglandin type, uh, thing that is made, chemical that's made by, or precursors made by the lungs, angiotensinogen, uh, that's converted by angiotensin, uh, to angiotensin 1, then angiotensin 2. These, um, uh, hormones or, uh, prostaglandins actually cause an increase, and again, pardon my visuals here, they cause an increase in the water, the fluid that you retain, and, an increase in the tone, the, the muscle tone of the media, the vascular tone. So those two things increase the blood pressure. Uh, the kidneys have a couple of different uh, roles in this area, and obviously cortisol, the adrenal glands, they have significant roles as well, uh, as well as obviously the liver and lungs. Um, <clears throat> so that angiotensin... Uh, renin system increases our blood pressure. So they found out that by making a, a type of chemical called an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, they slowed that down. So the renin, renin angiotensin system plays a major role in the, in the pathophysiology, in the mechanism of high blood pressure. Um, ACE inhibitors have, were the first drugs out there, and sure enough, uh, they worked great. They did a lot of good things. They have some more side effects. And it's probably like niacin, maybe like some of the other things, where the thing that causes the side effect very well may be the thing that, um, that causes the improved health outcomes. Um, 
the uh, uh, ACEs, uh, ACEs and ARBs are equally important in the treatment of high blood pressure. But think about it. Is it the high blood pressure itself that's causing the problems or the outcome of the high blood pressure? There are, um, the WHO says that hypertension is the leading risk factor for mortality. Uh, the diseases associated with high blood pressure cause 13% of deaths in the world or 7.5 million deaths per year. So hypertension, again, the high blood pressure itself is not what's killing you. It's causing other problems like heart attack, stroke that do kill you. So what we want to look for is the long-term effect of the medication, not the immediate short-term uh, decrease in blood pressure. And the ARBs will decrease blood pressure just as effectively as ACE inhibitors. It's just that they don't uh, have as good an impact on the... Um, the outcomes we mentioned. Now, <clears throat> this started happening in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, based on some observation about, uh, um, again, the first class to come out was the ACE inhibitors. They found that you had a cough. That was, again, up to 20% of us get some cough with ACE inhibitors. It's, again, probably associated with some prostaglandin uh, release. So uh, they said uh, they developed a new type of, uh, of pill with a different mechanism. Instead of uh, inhibiting uh, ACE inhi uh, the ACE angiotensin converting enzyme, it blocked specific receptors. And so they called them angiotensin receptor blockers, ARBs. So <clears throat> they, they expected to get the same positive impact on things like nephropathy, diabetes, uh, heart failure, and they didn't. They started to notice this in the late 90s. Then there was the, uh, I can give you a couple of these citations if you want to look them up. You can pull them right out of this article and I'll give you that citation. The uh, Valsartan hypertensive uh, long-term use evaluation. Strauss and Hall in 26, uh, 2006 did a meta-analysis involving more than 55,000 patients. Uh, in that one, they found actually an increase in myocardial infarction. That was a weird signal that surprised everybody. They've done a lot of research since then on this specific issue, and it does not appear that ARBs actually increase heart attacks. Uh, they don't decrease them, though. Um, <clears throat> another analysis by Turnbull... Um, demonstrated ACE and, and ARBs did not differ regarding their res effect on stroke risk. They did affect uh, heart attack risk very differently. Um, <clears throat> so, as you can imagine, what happened with all this information coming out? Well, there was a huge amount of criticism, debate, statements that all these studies are flawed. Bottom line, at the end of the day, there's recognition that ABEs are, uh, or ACE inhibitors are not ARBs. ARBs are not ACE inhibitors. They don't do the same thing, and they don't have the same long-term impact. Um, <clears throat> in 2011, there was another analysis. Uh, this was a meta-analysis looking at 37 clinical trials, uh, concluding, it was, this was done by Bangalore and, and Associates, the conclusion was, although ARBs do not increase the risks of MI and total mortality, they do not decrease the risks of, in, of MI and mortality significantly, even when compared with the placebo. So, <clears throat> nevertheless, ARBs did significantly reduce the risks of heart failure, stroke, and new onset diabetes. So let's take a look. What did ARBs actually impact? Here's another way of looking at it. Total mortality, no, that uh, NS means non-significant. So no, not a significant impact on uh, total mortality. Cardiovascular mortality, again, was non-significant. Uh, heart, uh, heart failure and stroke were significantly decreased by ARBs. Um, Myocardial infarction was decreased somewhat, but again, not significantly. 
Now, why is this? Uh, let's go take a look at what's going on here. <clears throat> well, first of all, um, they do two different things. As I mentioned before, the um, here's some uh, another way of looking at. Remember, we looked at that angiotensin uh, system, angiotensinogens made by I think the liver and then uh, converted uh, to renin uh, by renin to angiotensin one, then angiotensin two. Um, ACE inhibitors stop this process, so therefore you get an increased. Um, uh, amount of bradykinin. Bradykinin is no longer being uh, blocked or broken down. That has a big impact. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, the ARBs, however, only impact the angiotensin II receptor blockers. Actually, the uh, AT1 and AT2 blockers. They block the, uh, the receptors. So what's the big difference here? Uh, with both of them, you get not so much angiotensin uh, impact, but only with the ACE inhibitors do you get a big increase in bradykinin. Well, <clears throat> why does that matter? Bradykinin is a big deal, evidently. So, again, um, inhibition, ACE inhibition causes a couple of things. Number one, Angiotensin 1 is not broken down to angiotensin 2. So we get all of the positive things that you would get. And this is also uh, shared with uh, ARBs. ARBs do this as well. They decrease vasoconstriction. Uh, they decrease monocyte adhesion. They decrease uh, smooth muscle cell uh, proliferation, oxidant release, and endothelial, some endothelial dysfunction. Bradykinin, uh, however, has a, a uh, significant boost to these activities. What does increased bradykinin do? And again, we're not breaking uh, bradykinin down anymore with the ACE inhibitors. You get va increased vasodilatation, uh, increased uh, inhibition of monocytes, e, that's endothelial uh, nitric oxide, is improved. Um, tissue uh, plasminogen levels, fibrinolysis, uh, increased anti-remodeling effect, increased anti-oxidant uh, effects, and therefore improved endothelial function. So there you have it. Um, now, <clears throat> if your doc just didn't tell you about any of this stuff, don't be surprised. Most docs don't. Um, it's a lot easier and quicker to just write a script for an ARB. Um, Again, this has gone on 13 minutes. Thank you very much for your attention.